Each year, New York City's Jacob Javits Center transforms into the biggest showroom on the planet. It's the 2018 New York Auto Show, a giant among auto shows. Thousands of press gather from all over to see the new introductions and get their hands on the latest new cars, SUVs, concepts, and trucks. So what will you be driving next? It's all right here. And whether you're serious about cars or curious what will be rolling down tomorrow's roads, sit back, buckle up, and hang on as Fox Sports takes you on a ride around the New York Auto Show like you've never seen. The New York Auto Show on Fox Sports, presented by NADA Guys. Welcome to the New York Auto Show. Hello everybody, I'm Tor Dietrich. Well, just outside the walls here at the Jacob Javits Center puts you in the middle of Manhattan, just a few blocks away from Times Square, where Uber, Lyft, and yellow cabs rule the streets. So you might not think of New York City as the center of the car world. Au contraire. There's 6,000 press on hand here to witness the 60 new car debuts and a million expected shoppers, enthusiasts, and families coming through the turnstiles over the next week and a half. New York Auto Show is among the lead auto shows of the world. And we've got you riding shotgun with our Fox Sports Auto Show team, Nick Miles, Mike Caudill, and joining me now, Gino Effler from car shopping site NADA Guides. So Gino, you were sharing with me earlier some great stuff about people's buying habits these days, it's changed. What they're shopping for these days, trucks, SUVs, it's like 67% of people that go online on sites like ours are looking for trucks and SUV information. Now, back in LA, we talked about electrics. You said the jury was still out. If they're gonna make it, what do you think now? I think the jury is still out, but they're getting closer to rendering a decision. The consumers still have a kind of a love-hate relationship with electrics right now. They love the idea, but they hate taking that step to go buy one. Shoppers, however, are in record numbers starting to, to look more at electric cars online. So that's a positive thing for OEMs. Okay, thanks, Gino. And we'll hear from Gino throughout the show. But right now, do you like speed? Oh, I love speed. And I know I like speed. And definitely Mike likes speed, right? Of course, Tor, I love speed. And I'm going to start this show, and I'm going to end this show, with nothing but speed. That's why I'm going to start the show with this vehicle right here. It's the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Let's get straight to it. 505 class-leading horsepower under the hood, and a 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. This ultra-performance SUV also has a top speed of 176 miles per hour. It's all-wheel drive and meant to conquer any racetrack and with all that speed, you need incredible stopping power. Carbon ceramic Brembo brakes stop this SUV in seconds. Designed for the performance-minded enthusiast, the interior is also incredibly refined. Suede leather wraps the steering wheel and paddle shifters are perfectly aligned for seamless shifting. And for impeccable sound, an 8.8-inch widescreen color display controls your 14-speaker premium Harden Kardon sound system. Alfa Romeo spared no expense with the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. But if Italian isn't your thing, then maybe German is. Let's take a closer look at the BMW X4 M40i performance SUV. BMW wanted to move the X4 in a more sportier direction, and that also includes the interior. The instrument panel has been lowered to keep the focus on the road, and the design allows the instrument panel and door panels to connect, making one streamless line. The BMW X4 M40i Performance SUV, their M package, has 355 horsepower. It's a twin-power turbocharged motor with a high-precision injection with full variable valve timing. Pair that with an 8-speed sport transmission and BMW's driving experience control, and you've got a fast SUV on your hands. BMW is offering 21-inch M-series double-spoke wheels and the renowned sport exhaust to give this thing a throaty sound. So there you have it, an up close and personal look at two ultra sport utility vehicles here at the New York Auto Show. But I wanna show you the expansive nature as well of what makes these shows so much fun. It's like being a kid in a candy store. And uh, speaking of candy, here's another treat for you, Nick Miles. 
Well, thanks, Mike. Many of us can't live without this, the smartphone. And Lincoln have done something very cool with the brand new Aviator. They have something called a smart key, which uses your smartphone to not only do things like lock and unlock the vehicle and even open the tailgate, but you can actually start it using your smartphone and even drive it. The smart key is only one of many innovations in the new Lincoln Aviator. With the new smart key, you can give access to a designated driver on a temporary basis like a valet, friend or family member. Then revoke that privilege when required. The new Aviator is powered by a twin turbocharged engine. It is expected to have the best MPG in class for any vehicle with a third row. And for even better fuel economy, it'll have the option of a hybrid. Lincoln announced they will be bringing electrification to the brand. Under the hood, all new technology and the first time in our history that a twin turbocharged engine and a plug-in hybrid electric powertrain have been mated together. It's going to provide seamless all-wheel drive technology to consumers. Now something to notice on this Aviator are the 22-inch wheels, some of the biggest wheels we've ever seen on any SUV. But take a look at these ripples in the side of the car. These are ripples from water, like a stone being thrown in water and ever-decreasing circles in the body of the vehicle. In the technology department, the new Aviator has suspension preview technology that uses a camera to scan the road ahead and seamlessly adjust the suspension to match the road. The inside of the Lincoln Aviator mirrors the groundbreaking design in the inside of the Navigator, clean and artistic lines and a tranquil, secluded cabin. The compact SUV is now the largest segment of the US market. Until now, Cadillac hasn't had a product to offer. Spy photographers were taking pictures of the new Cadillac XT4 when it was in full camouflage in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Cadillac design team made bold artistic changes to the company's profile with the XT4. It still retains the Cadillac DNA, but it's a new DNA. The X-T4 powertrain is comprised of a 2.0-liter turbocharged direct injection, stop-start engine, and a 9-speed automatic transmission. GM said the vehicle will be available in three trim levels, luxury, premium luxury, and sport, creating choices for customers. And to reinforce the message of American luxury, the X-T4 will be built and assembled in Kansas City, Kansas. Coming up, electric cars to supercars, and everything in between. Plus, can you trust an autonomous car? It's all coming to you as Fox Sports brings you the New York Auto Show, presented by NADA Guides. And welcome back. Well, small SUVs are hot, great mileage, solid handling, and more practical. So it's no surprise that Lexus is expanding their SUV lineup with an all-new crossover. Meet the UX. Lexus's first compact crossover. Starting up front, there's no mistake in the UX as a Lexus. But what I love is how the flexibility of LEDs are used by designers to shape a brand's identity. The same holds for the rear. The UX has 120 LEDs in its rear configuration, perhaps a lighting look of things that come from the brand. Lexus thinks of the UX as an urban explorer. That's backed up on the inside, standard Alexa and CarPlay, as well as voice control with Siri. There's a lot to the UX that you don't see. Lane tracing assist, pre-collision warning system with pedestrian and cyclist detection, dynamic radar cruise control, and road sign assist. It's all about keeping you in the center of the lane and avoiding those rear enders. Under the hood, an optional fourth generation electric hybrid, creating an E all wheel drive. Gas powers the front and electric motor for the rear. McPherson strut, double wishbone out back, low center of gravity and electric steering. This laundry list all combines for what promises to be very crisp handling. Now, Lexus execs tell me that the hybrid system is tied to the navigation system. Why? Well, when you go up a hill, it uses the electric motor, and going down, it can recapture that energy. That gives you a combined 38 miles per gallon. Look for the UX when it goes on sale this December, and it will be the first Lexus to have a subscription option. More on that in months to come. Now, Kia are one of the only car companies to make the 100 list of top global brands. They join companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Coca-Cola, along with Google. But Kia have always been a challenger brand, and they're a value proposition brand. 
And that's exactly what they are now with the brand new K900. Kia now has a patriarch sedan rather than a sports sedan, equipped and ready for the savvy executive. The 2019 K900 is powered by a 3.3-litre twin-turbo V6. The engine makes 365 horsepower and 376 pounds-foot of torque and is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. Where the old K900 was available with rear-wheel drive, the 2019 model is all-wheel drive only. Once you're on the inside of the brand new K900, you're blasted with this 12.3 inch touchscreen and a 17 speaker Lexicon Harman Kardon sound system. The driver has a 20-way powered, heated and ventilated seat. The rear seat passengers are not ignored with the option of power, reclining, ventilated and heated comfort as well. Now Kia made it a one-two punch at this year's auto show. The first, the K900, the second punch, this, the brand new Kia Optima. The silks came off at the Jacob Javits Center in New York. Outside the updates are mild and include standard upgrades across the lineup such as the Stinger-inspired LED daytime running lights, a new 16-inch alloy wheel design, and a sports bumper with LED fog lamps. In the tech department, the 2019 Optima gets a slathering of standard issue safety systems, forward collision alert system, and lane keeping assist is also included. Now, the Kia Optima is the first non-premium gasoline vehicle to get an embedded modem that works with UvoLink and UvoLink with navigation. What does that mean, cutting all the technical speak? It means it can go to the internet and get new information and updates. One of the things I love the most about the automotive industry is the competitive nature of the automakers, especially in the truck market. Now, over my shoulder, just debuted here in New York, is the all-new GMC Sierra AT4. Dubbed more of the working man's off-road truck, the AT4 started with a 2-inch Rancho suspension lift to give it ground clearance and a stronger, more aggressive look. The exterior look is also performance-minded with black chrome finish on the fenders, fog lamps, and grill inserts. And don't forget about the interior. It's as refined as you'd expect it with the Sierra AT4. We were looking at the AT4, and as we made our way around and looked at some of the other trucks, there was one thing that they both had in common. And it's this new feature right here on the tailgate. Now, I don't want to tell you about it, but I do want Roger to come in and tell us a little bit more about it. I pushed the button right here, and it dropped the tailgate right down. But Roger, show us what else this tailgate does. Right, here's the best part. When you touch the top button on the touchpad, we drop what we call the inner gate. Now, once that's down, we can get closer to the cargo that's in the back of your truck. And then even better, we have a step here that allows you to step up right back into your truck. If having a work truck that doubles as an off-road vehicle doesn't really suit your needs and you need something with a little bit more pavement pounding utility, let's take a look at the Ford Transit Connect. The Ford Transit Connect continues to be one of America's most spacious and versatile utility vans that is both affordable and compact. And with the addition of the Transit Connect wagon, you can fit up to seven passengers for work or play. And to make the Transit Connect even more attractive, Ford has offered it with both gas and diesel engine options. Whether you're looking for something like the GMC Sierra AT4 or even like this fire-breathing dragon, the Ford Raptor, there's always great things to find right here at the Auto Show. Well, Toyota is introducing their all-new Corolla hatchback. This Corolla, well, it's all about fun. And I think Toyota hit the nail on the head. Just look at the stance of this Corolla hatchback. Yes, I said stance on a Corolla. It's wider, sits lower by an inch, giving you a lower center of gravity. Yes, it's got multi-link, sport-tuned suspension, along with a 10-speed dynamic shift CVT or 6-speed manual. And you can get this puppy with 18-inch rims. Inside, Toyota's Entune 3.0 tech system with a customizable 8-inch touchscreen, wireless charging, and of course, Apple CarPlay and Amazon Alexa integration. But Toyota didn't stop there. They've added sealants and foam all around the car for better sound insulation, and under the hood, better mileage and power. And safety has been updated too with Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. That means full speed range dynamic cruise control, which can maintain speed from zero to 110 miles per hour. Add to that lane tracing assist and lane departure assist. Now Toyota is using an all new plastic polymer to save weight on the hatch and they've added angle to the hatch, adding to the hot looks of this hot hatch. Look for the all new Toyota Corolla hatchback out this summer. Coming up next, we've got the latest concepts and we've got tips if you're in the market for an electric car. 
It's all coming to you by Fox Sports from the New York Auto Show, presented by NADA Guides. Subaru's got an all-new Forester that they're introducing here at the New York Auto Show. Here to tell us more about it, Dominic Infante. Dominic, gone is the old boxy look for the Forester. Yeah, you know, actually we have the original Forester here and you can see how boxy that car was. This is obviously a much more modern SUV. Let's talk about the exterior. A lot of similarity with that of the Outback, right? Yeah, there's definitely a family look we've tried to maintain across our lineup. And although this is still a very tall vehicle, people like it because you sit up higher but it's actually much more aerodynamic. Our other main tenant we want is to keep the sight lines great. And that's why you notice our A-pillars are very slim. Even in the back, great outward vision. I want to talk a little more about the color on this car. It's white, of course, but it's two-tone. You have these orange accents. This is a new model for us. It's called the Sport. And it's got the black grill, the black wheels. So yeah, it does look a little bit more sporty and hopefully uh, people will love it. Okay, let's talk technology. You have EyeSight, but you've added some new technology to that too. We have standard EyeSight, obviously, which is our dual camera system. And new this year is uh, something called Driver Focus. That's basically a facial recognition program. One of the main things is if you start looking away for too long, it starts beeping at you to say, hey, wake up. And if you don't respond, you don't move, it will then contact the EyeSight system. It'll begin slowing the car down and it can bring the car to a complete stop. My how the Forester has come along. Now with more on SUVs, Here's Mike. Designed in the U.S., developed in the U.S., and built in the U.S. No, we're not talking about a domestic American automaker. We're talking about this one right here. It's Acura, and we're in the Acura booth here at the New York Auto Show, and this is the all-new 2019 Acura MDX A-Spec, and A-Spec is their performance edition of their vehicles, and those make up just north of 40% of the vehicles sold for the Acura model line. Now, this is the big news here at the show. It's the all-new RDX, it's a slightly smaller version, but it's packed with technology. Under the hood, 272 horsepower, that's what's pumping out under the motor. But I gotta bring you guys around. Take a look at the inside of this vehicle. It's all about luxury and creature comforts with this vehicle. And the best part is that 10.2 inch screen on the inside comes with all of the features that you want in a vehicle like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto packed with technology for the family as we make our way over to the red one over here something else that's really special about Acura and their vehicles is all the safety technology that you get in their vehicles front pedestrian detection lane departure warning one of the key things that this car brings is the true touchpad uh, connectivity safety is always something that we think about connectivity portion is something that's very difficult for all OEMs to deal with we have a true touch system that's in this vehicle we feel that is very very good combination of touchpad and mouse type usage that works really well without taking your eyes off the road. Now Genesis unveiled the Accenture concept here on the floor of the New York International Auto Show. The form, the lines and the design show a way forward for the Genesis brand. The Accenture concept is an all electric concept coupe made from a super lightweight low slung carbon fiber body and with a battery powered motor that the brand says will get it from zero to 60 miles an hour in just three seconds. It's Genesis' first battery electric vehicle, though this is no squeaky clean urban runabout. Instead, the Accenture explores what electrification means to the modern Gran Turismo car. The Accenture has a stunning, sexy look. This is a good thing, considering that while Genesis makes excellent cars, it continues to generate less awareness and hype than its flashier German competitors. The most striking thing about the Accenture is its two butterfly doors, which open silently with fingerprints and facial recognition, which enables push-button controls. The transparent hood ends in a Formula One style nose, and the air intakes on each side are flanked by two thin quad headlamps that sit flush with the car's body that's wrapped around by seamless glass windows front to back. On the inside, cognac leather and chevron quilting coat the two cockpit style seats. A slim center console and an eight inch widescreen display divide the cabin. Genesis didn't release specifications on range, power or charging time of the Accenture since this is a pure concept and not slated for production. Now you might be able to tell that the American market is dominated with trucks and SUVs and VW, the German manufacturer, are making a serious attempt to appeal to the American market. And so at the New York International Auto Show, they are 
unveiled a brand new Atlas truck called the Tonoke. The dual cab short bed pickup truck debuted at the New York International Auto Show. The Atlas Tonneau has a 3.6 liter V6 FSI engine, an eight speed automatic transmission and VW's four motion all wheel drive system. Volkswagen say the vehicle's engine can produce 276 horsepower and 266 pounds foot of torque and accelerate from zero to 60 miles an hour in just 8.5 seconds. And before you mock that time, remember this is a pickup truck. At 214.1 inches, the Atlas Tonok is 15.8 inches longer than VW's Atlas SUV, and its 9.8 inches of ground clearance is two inches higher than that of the Atlas SUV. Inside, the vehicle can seat five passengers. Most interior settings are controlled digitally through a touchscreen infotainment system. Now, currently, VW don't have any plans to produce the Tonok truck, but they're taking the temperature here at the New York International Auto Show to see how the public feel about their new truck. Up next, we show you Toyota's latest off-roaders. And are you ready for a Bugatti in your garage? Start saving now as Fox Sports brings you the New York Auto Show, presented by NADA Guides. And welcome back. I'm joined once again by Gino Effler from car shopping site NADA Guys. So Gino, you just told me that car searches for electric cars, they're up 50%. So we know the interest is there. Let's talk about practicality. Do you have some tips for those looking at electric cars? I do, Tor. It's, I, I call it the three R's. Range, relevance, and relative value. Range? How many miles do you drive? Where do you go? And people need to really look at that and say, I go to school every day, I go to work. Where do I really go? How many miles do I accumulate? Then I look at relevance. Does the vehicle fit my lifestyle and the places I want to go? Are you somebody who likes to go camping? Do you just do city driving? That plays into the type of electric vehicle you need to choose. Then, relative value. This is the cost value equation. Typically there's a premium for electric cars. The money you're saving on gas, how long will it take you until you are now in the positive side of the expenditures for the car versus the fuel savings? Okay, let's talk about at the house itself. Obviously at apartment dwellers, that's a tough thing. They usually don't have the parking and they're not set up for electrics. But even if you have a garage, it, may, it can be challenging, right? It can be very challenging. And, and even your workplace, if there's no place to charge the vehicle at work or the places you like to go. You know, you have to kind of put some thought into this beforehand. What places do I typically travel to and are there recharging stations at that location? But Gino, it's not just about range. A lot has to do with carrying your stuff, right? Cargo space. Absolutely. I mean, the cargo space is a key factor when consumers purchase a vehicle, whether it's an SUV or whether it's a small compact car. A guy like you, you play golf, you gotta have room for a set of golf clubs. Some electric vehicles have that space, some don't. That's a key component when shopping for an electric vehicle. Now, these are all questions that I'm sure a lot of consumers have. Gino, thanks for that. And now with more on electrics, here's Nick. Well, thanks, Tor. The New York International Auto Show is a flag in the sand for Hyundai. They're challenging Tesla's Model 3, which gets 220 miles on a single charge, and also Chevrolet's Bolt, which gets 238 miles on a single charge. But this brand new Hyundai Kona EV gets 250 miles on a single charge. The Kona Electric will debut as a 2019 model with an initial launch in the larger EV markets like California and then eventually the Pacific Northwest and beyond. The Kona boasts 201 horsepower and 291 pounds foot of torque, achieving acceleration of 7.6 seconds from zero to 62 miles an hour. We're not really giving up anything on the interior to get you that kind of range. It's not a compromised cargo solution. It's not a compromised passenger solution. It's the same as a regular gasoline Kona. So we're really excited to have that kind of range without any compromises. 
The Kona Electric gets other goodies too, like a full complement of LED exterior lighting and a suite of driver assistance features such as forward collision avoidance with pedestrian detection, lane keeping assist and rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist. But wait, there's more. It also gets high beam assist, blind spot collision warning and a driver attention warning system. Now in the regular Kona, you would see slats in the grill, but here in the EV, it's completely solid up front because the engine doesn't need air, because it doesn't need cooling, because it's completely electric. Inside the Kona Electric offers the fairly typical of Hyundai's new technology packaging, including QI wireless charging, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration, Bluelink connected car system, rain sensing wipers and heads up display. Introduction to the EV market will begin late this year with deliveries being in the aforementioned EV heavy markets in Q4. Now Mini came to the hybrid electric market with the Countryman PHEV. The only difference between the Countryman PHEV and a regular Countryman is this yellow logo on the side and the fact that it's a charge door. The Mini Cooper SE Countryman all four plug-in hybrid model has a combination of an internal combustion engine with an electric drive, which provides a system output with 165 kilowatts, ideal for city driving. The electric only mode lets you cover short distances with zero emissions using the power stored in the lithium ion battery. For long excursions, the save battery mode smartly uses the power generated by the gasoline engine to partially recharge the battery and keep it at 90% charge so you can go wherever your adventures lead you and switch back to the electric motor when you get there. The Mini Countryman plug-in hybrid is every bit as adventurous and versatile as the conventionally powered Mini Countryman with impressive cargo space, comfortable seating for five and a full complement of premium standard features. The cool thing is that this vehicle still maintains Mini's classic go-kart style handling. Do, do you guys smell it? It is, it's a, it's a real pine tree. And despite the fact that we're in New York, these aren't real mountains, but it is, I swear, it's a real pine tree. All right, we're in the Toyota booth, downstairs at Javits, and we're talking about off-road vehicles, which is the most expansive market in the auto industry right now. The Toyota booth, why is it special? these vehicles right here. It's the all-new TRD Pro lineup from Toyota. There's probably no other automaker that is more synonymous with off-roading than Toyota. With three unique vehicles to choose from, the 2019 Tacoma TRD Pro is the one that starts things off. From a visual standpoint, the first thing you see when looking at the Tacoma is the aggressive desert air intake that climbs up the windshield. The front springs have been adjusted to provide an additional one inch of lift for better off-road clearance. If you really know what you're talking about when it comes to off-roading, you'll understand the importance of offset wheels as well. On the Tacoma, the addition of one inch provides even better stability while wheeling off-road. Let's talk about the TRD Pro that seats four people comfortably, the Toyota 4Runner. And it's been one of America's best-selling and favorite SUVs for years. Outfitted with a roof rack to store your tent, cooler, or anything else, it's literally the ultimate adventure vehicle. Rounding out Toyota's offerings is the Tundra TRD Pro. This truck is in the market for those that want a full-size truck, but with incredible off-road capabilities. The Tundra adds two inches of full ground clearance. They all ride, all three of these vehicles, on specifically vehicle-tuned off-road Fox shocks. These make them very capable off-road while still having nice on-road manners. No Mountain is out of reach with Toyota and their TRD lineup. Coming up, the latest SUVs including the new Maserati Trofeo. And can you trust an autonomous car? We have the answer as Fox Sports coverage continues on the New York Auto Show. Presented by NADA Guides. Despite all the hype on SUVs, sedans still represent about a third of auto sales. Well, it makes sense that Nissan would introduce this, the all-new Altima. Now new for this Altima is all-wheel drive and variable compression turbo. Nissan also features ProPilot Assist. 
With ProPilot Assist, your car actually brakes when going backward into something. Well, ProPilot Assist is very simple. It's a single lane semi-autonomous technology. If, for example, I encounter a vehicle that's traveling at a slower speed ahead of me, it will slow down, come to a complete stop if necessary. And then as that car pulls off, even for a complete stop, the car will re-accelerate and continue on its way. And Nissan pulled out all the stops on design. As the SUVs and crossovers are now becoming mainstream, it actually gives us the freedom and opportunity to make the sedan more stylish and sleeker for the customer who's looking for something more unique and sophisticated. Inside the Altima are lots of USB outlets, including two USB-C. The Altima will come with two powertrain choices, a 2.5-liter four-cylinder or a two-liter turbo. And the Altima is the third best-selling sedan in the U.S. and the number one nameplate for Nissan with 5.6 million sold to date. Look for it in showrooms this fall. And Genesis is expanding their sedan lineup with this, the all new and very sporty G70. Opt for the 3.3 liter turbo V6 that creates a respectable 365 horsepower. And this quote entry level sedan blasts zero to 60 in just 4.5 seconds. Check out those Brembos. This bad boy is just begging for some corners to hug. Insiders say this Genesis employs special hot stamping and structural adhesives that enhance the rigidity and stiffness of the G70. And take a look at the interior. Wow. Now Genesis execs tell me that these running lights, that look right there, that's gonna be the future of the brand as it moves forward. Look for the all new Genesis G70 in showrooms this summer. According to NADAguides.com, this past March, 66% of vehicles sold were light trucks and SUVs, like this one right here. It's the all-new 2019 Hyundai Tucson. But what's the big news for Hyundai here at the New York Auto Show? It's this vehicle right here. What is it? The 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe. The all-new 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe gets a much bolder design as it continues to be Hyundai's best-selling SUV with more than 1.5 million vehicles sold. The stance of the new Santa Fe gets wider and more athletic. Cool LED running lights are positioned atop the LED headlights, and Hyundai's cascading grille speaks volumes of its new refinement. Now it's time to take a look at what's on the inside of this vehicle. They're saying that this is the best family SUV that they've built at Hyundai. It's got a lot of room inside, a lot of creature comforts, all-wheel drive, can put a lot of stuff in the back, all the great safety features you want. At the beginning, I was talking about this vehicle over here, it's the Hyundai Tucson. Small and compact, sporty and nimble, the 2019 Tucson competes in the highly competitive crossover utility vehicle segment. The new exterior look will include Hyundai's new signature cascading grille. The interior will get a new center stack design, new leather seats, not to mention a seven inch infotainment display. It's all about technology with both the Tucson and Santa Fe called SmartSense Technology, optional models will come with a variety of safety features that set the vehicle apart from others in the competitive segment. As Hyundai continues to expand its product portfolio with vehicles like the Tucson and Santa Fe, they're doing the right thing. They're packing in technology and creating a family-friendly vehicle. Now there's a lot of competition in the marketplace and Nick Miles has the next ones for you. The brand new RAV4 is a big deal for Toyota, but it's a huge deal for the world because this is the number one automotive segment in the world. And the RAV4 is the number one vehicle. And this segment is going to do nothing but grow. The 2019 Toyota RAV4 is bigger, bolder, and more capable than ever. Toyota embraces this trend with a bold and blocky style, similar to the Toyota pickup trucks, while retaining many of the car-like qualities that buyers find appealing. It dominates in the segment and the new generation will help Toyota keep their number one position. The new RAV4 rides on Toyota's new global architecture, TNGA. Its wheelbase now stretches out to 105.9 inches, making it a whole 1.2 inches longer. The lineup will offer a wide spectrum of trims, including an adventure model that Toyota says will have some legitimate off-road capabilities, courtesy of all-wheel drive and a sporty hybrid with the most power in the range along with a suspension tuned to give it the best handling on the street. One of the most important things in the modern car is connectivity, and connectivity is provided in the new RAV4 with a Wi-Fi setup from Verizon Wireless. You can even use your Amazon Alexa. Arriving winter 2018, the all-new Toyota RAV4 is ready to hit the hot spots downtown or the hot springs out of town and everywhere in between. 
All right, we're talking about Italian, we're talking about sexy, we're talking about something that make, makes waves. You're definitely not talking about me. We're talking about uh, a new Levante that uh, just introduced, Tim Kaniskas, the head of the Maserati brand. Tim, tell me about this new car that you've just unveiled in New York. This was a big event for us. I mean, we're excited about this. Levante is the number one selling car for Maserati. Half of our sales last year were this car. In a market that is obsessed with SUVs right now, we came in with a Maserati SUV, which was different than anything else. The craftsmanship, the style, the design, the luxury and the performance that was already there, we took it to the next level. We significantly raised the bar. We put a twin turbo V8 in it with 590 horsepower. This thing will go zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds and do 187 miles an hour in pure silence and luxury. And wait a second, launch control in an SUV, what are you thinking? Well, hey, you know what? There's more to launch control than just what you're thinking about, the, the most extreme zero to 60 times. When you have this much power, you gotta make sure that it's safe and controllable. So launch control and things like that are gonna make sure that it's a safe, reliable car for you, in addition to being an unbelievable experience. Amazing, Tim, congratulations on being head of Maserati Thank brand. You. and congratulations on your new car. Next, we show you supercars and we answer the question on whether you can trust an autonomous car. It's all coming to you as Fox Sports brings you the New York Auto Show presented by NADA Guides. Imagine going to a Formula One race and being able to whisper to the person next to you. Sound impossible? Well, maybe not. This is Nissan's all-new Formula E race car and is heading to the race track this December when season five of Formula E begins. Nissan's Formula E race car is based off of technology know-how from the Nissan LEAF, which gives the Formula E race car more power and range, eliminating the need for a mid-race swap. This all-electric series offers Nissan a new way of testing electric car technology in extreme performance conditions. The Formula E Championship Series even has a stop here in New York. Now from race cars, which require precision driver input, we turn our attention to self-driving cars, which require no input. Here with the answer to the question, whether you can trust autonomous cars, is Nick. Now building a car is just like a championship ball game. It takes a lot of blood, sweat and tears. But building an autonomous car is a lot more important. It's not just tipping that ball into the basket or converting that field goal or even sliding into home. It's a machine that's actually taking care of the lives of passengers, drivers and our community. The question is, can you trust self-driving vehicles? Surprisingly, results from a recent MIT study says that almost half would never buy a completely self-driving car because of the loss of control and trust. Manufacturers put billions of dollars into the development of self-driving cars, but if no one wants them, who are they going to sell them to? 25 to 34 year olds are more comfortable with autonomous technology, but the more mature an individual, the less comfortable they become with controlling technologies. Jaguar Land Rover and Waymo made a big announcement at the New York International Auto Show, a long-term strategic partnership. Together, the two companies will develop the world's first premium self-driving electric vehicle for Waymo driverless transport services. Customers love owning their Jaguar Land Rover product. However, there are occasions when one wants to use shared mobility or ride hail. And so this is fantastic in terms of expanding the offering we have for our customers at a premium level with a trusted partner to provide yet another good experience. All right, joining us is Anton Wallman. He's an independent investor and analyst. Anton, the climate of self-driving cars? Well, we have had a number of recent incidents, both in Arizona and in California in the last couple of weeks, as well as another couple of accidents over the last couple of years that basically have um, introduced a healthy amount of skepticism among the public in terms of the safety of these autonomous vehicles. And as these tests and trials continue, over the next several years for that matter, I think that skepticism is only going to increase and the companies that are going to be successful in this regard are going to have to prove and earn their safety records. Most experts agree that we are, however, moving towards a highly automated society. Now, responsibility of self-driving cars equals liability and liability equals money. So if things go wrong, if things go bad, if things become unthinkable, 
that responsibility could cost somebody a lot of money. All right, guys, the last segment of the show for me, oh, man, I get to talk about the two hottest cars here at the show, and we're talking about performance. I'm going to stop you right there because I don't want to show you the actual car I'm talking about, but I'm going to tell you about it. It's the Mercedes AMG GT63, and this will be the S version. Four doors on this bad boy, and it's got under the hood, you ready? 630 horsepower. Now, I can't tell you all the details about it, but I know somebody that can tell me about what makes this car special, especially the engine. It's Eric and Akbiak, and he's a product manager for Mercedes and the AMG side of their business here in North America. We have the hand-built motor here, uh, four liters, twin turbo V8, zero to 60, touch over three seconds. All right, let's make our way around to the inside. It feels like a race car. There's a lot of carbon fiber. Let me guess, Apple CarPlay on the inside. Um, tell me about these two screens right here because they look pretty big. Two 12.3 inch screens kind of bonded together, gives a nice visual display. You can customize the screens any way you want it, anything you want within your fingertips while you drive the car. You could probably do an hour long documentary just on this car, but this next car that we're going over to, it's a two door and I'm just going to be perfectly honest with you guys. This is the car of my son Tyler's dreams. So let's make our way over to Bugatti. All right, we're gonna get right to it right here. And what do I get to show you guys? Yeah, that's right, the keys to this car right here. Now, I'm gonna close the show out with the price of this vehicle. It is the all new Bugatti Chiron Sport. What makes this car special? Let's start with four. Four meaning four turbochargers under the hood. It's a 16 cylinder vehicle and the horsepower, 1,479. Now the exterior of it is truly stunning, it's all carbon fiber. That spoiler on the rear has an adjustable hydraulic system that will lift it up at top speeds. If you make your way around to the front of this, these windshield wiper blades on here, these are the first ever carbon fiber blades in the industry. I got the keys. I'm the only one here at the auto show. They're going to let get behind the wheel of this thing. Now, I wish I was outside of the auto show where I get a chance to drive it, but let's close it out on one thing, guys. We talked about all the carbon fiber, and this thing is truly beautiful but we gotta hit you with the number, ready? $3.26 million, and guess what? They're already sold out with this new model line that will come out in the near future. That's it for me guys here in New York at the Auto Show. See you next time. And join me once again, Gino Effler from Car Shopping Site, NADA Guides. Now Gino, great event, lots of new cars, lots of small crossovers, right? Let's start with Toyota's RAV4. They're the champ, they're the leader. It's bigger, more room inside, better gas mileage, more power. What's not to like? And now they have the UX on the Lexus side. The Lexus UX is a new compact crossover from Lexus, which is gonna be a smash hit. How about the Hyundai Kona Electric? When Hyundai designed the Kona, they did it from the ground up as both a gas-powered vehicle and an electric-powered vehicle. The mile range is what is so attractive to people because it relieves the anxiety that they have when they're ready to buy a car like that. All right, let's talk sedans. You have Nissan with their Altima. Nissan Altima, of the top three selling sedans in America, the Altima is the only one with rear-wheel drive, and this is a new generation vehicle. And Kia, the K900. The K900 is Kia's flagship sedan. It's the most technologically advanced Kia on the market today. And then there's Lincoln. They have the new Aviator. I can use my smartphone to start this car and to unlock the doors. I'm loving that. Well, with all the success of the Navigator, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Aviator can do out in the marketplace. Well, Gino, that's all the time we have. Thanks for joining us, and my thank pleasure. you for joining us. For Nick Miles, Mike Caudill, I'm Tor Dietrich. We'll see you on the road.